Hello, my name is Jason Jones. I'd like to present to you a case of a white cataract with a shallow anterior chamber and significant corneal patata. You can note here the presentation of the iris to the Can't internal aspect of the temporal clear corneal incision, sh demonstrating the shallowness of the chamber. The uh, pupil has not been dilated preoperatively, and intraoperative uh, epi sugar cane is used. Uh, in measured amounts to help uh, sequentially dilate and deepen the chamber and the white cataract uh, is stained on the capsule during the uh, installation of viscoelastic you can note that the iris still is fairly close to the uh, aspect of the endothelium there really is not a significant amount of space to maneuver in this eye the capsule is punctured and a small amount of liquefied cortex is aspirated followed by creation of a continuous capsulorexis that is small and controlled in size. This makes the opening safe to create and also very symmetric. This smaller opening permits fecal emulsification of this uh, lens. There are some significant dense regions of the lens and a phaco chop technique is employed. It's important to keep the capsulorex as small at the early stage of uh, this surgery in order to maintain control of the opening during its creation. This uh, continuous opening keeps this element of the surgery safe as the uh, continuous opening permits some manipulation and stretch uh, during the fake emulsification portion of the surgery. Once the denser material is aspirated with the FACO handpiece, the softer cortical material is now evacuated using irrigation aspiration. This material is generally fairly adherent, and you can note here the more peripheral material is rather sticky. The posterior capsule is polished centrally using a terry squeegee and there is a significant plaque material nasally here. Under viscoelastic to create better tension on the posterior capsule, the edge is elevated and then utrata forceps are used to peel this membrane off the surface of the posterior capsule. Although peeling of this membrane is not mandatory, it does help to provide a clearer capsule and therefore delay opacification of the posterior capsule as thoroughly as possible. This curetting of the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim and peripheral capsular bag does help liberate significant material, especially in the subincisional region. And the intraocular lens is folded into the injector cartridge and then placed into the capsular bag. Additional viscoelastic helps provide extra space to allow evacuation of some additional subincisional peripheral cortical material. And then this small capsulotomy is enlarged carefully using a, a hypodermic needle to incise the rim and then you try to forceps to carefully manipulate this uh, opening larger. This is an important step in order to prevent anterior capsular phimosis which can lead to decentration of the intraocular lens and if extensive uh, may preclude good vision. The viscoelastic material is then evacuated from behind the intraocular lens. Then here you can see that the 
endothelium has been protected throughout with viscoelastic. The wounds are hydrated and checked. The pressure is titrated. And here at the end, you can note that there is this granular appearance to the corneal tissue, and this is the gotata of the endothelium. Thank you.